what do you consider a classic? Not from writing, from listening. Because that influences your writing. So like, do you want like references of songs I, I consider want a classic? Your, your fa- all of it. An album I would consider a classic is Accepting Speech, of course, um, AKA's Levels. I want to know from you, dude, what do you consider a classic? Not from writing, from listening. Because that influences your writing. So like, do you want like references of songs I, I consider want a classic? Your, your fa- all of it. An album I would consider a classic is Accepting Speech, of course, um, AKA's Levels. Of course, I mean, and, Even o- overseas. and, and, and also Casper's uh, uh, Tolo Felo is a, is a classic yes. oh, in, in my eyes. Because oh, like I said, for me, the main thing is, does it stand the test of time? Can people still enjoy it 10 years later, mm-hmm. you know? Even if it's in a different way, like, oh man, this used to be such a party track. It, it was dope, but now it's like, you know, it brings some humor to my Tell life. Tell me, now you're... It is. you're but, get- I, I see it their way. The, my my main thing is if it stands the test of time because mm. I honestly don't have a technical answer for you because when I personally go in the booth, I do what I feel. And then the people decide, yo, this is a classic. Yo, this is a hit or whatever the case may be. So my main thing is if it stands the test of time. I, I still listen to Illmatic. You know what I mean? I still listen to Get Rich or Die Trying. Mm. I still listen to Nothing Was The Same. I still listen to um, Sideline Story by J. Cole. Mm. And I consider them classics. Love that guy. You know? Because they, they can take me throughout. They can they can go with me throughout my whole journey of life and still have meaning and purpose. I'm going to go deeper. So, I'm going to yeah. go deeper. And I love the fact that you said test of time. And that's broad. That's broad. Now, I want the magnifying glass on your answer? I mean, I would start with the knowledge. You know, when you, when you, when you kind of have the knowledge of whatever it is you're into, it's kind of easy for you to decipher what is and what's not. So I would say when, if you do the history on hip hop, you know, and if you make it a fun thing to do, when you listen to, to albums that I've mentioned, it's easy to nitpick and be like, oh, I get the nuances. So I, I would say, number one, relatability. Mm. You know, like, w- when I go into the booth, I'm like, I'm going to speak about myself because I know for sure there's someone out there that's going to get it. You know what I mean? There's no way I'm alone in this. And I'm, I'm sure you, you, you feel the same, even if you're conscious or not conscious about it. But you're like, I'm just going to do me, bro. And whatever it is that comes after that, that's what it is. So I would say relatability. I would say moments, you know, moments too. I mean, we could we could we could talk about Hennessy. I remember the first time I heard Hennessy on the record was when I heard uh, the Genesis on Illmatic, and that nigga was like, "Yo, where the Phillies at? Yo, take this Hennessy." Yeah, I, I check my heart. And it's like, "Yo, what the <laughs> fuck is this?" Y'all you know I mean? So this Hennessy. And it's like, "What the hell is this?" Yeah, and and hearing you know moments like that, and then that made me want to know what the hell that is. Mm. That's a moment for me. Mm. You know what I mean? So I feel like relatability, moments, and I mean, honestly, the rest is, the rest, I don't know, man. It depends on the people. I don't, I can't, I can't be here and tell you, you have to know what beats to pick.